You are about to hear a romantic drama, Gay Red Kate, from Street and Smith's Love Story magazine, featuring the love story girl in the role of Dawn Travers. Dawn Travers, who ordinarily makes her home with her uncle and guardian, Jim Travers, has come to visit her Aunt Rosa at the latter's beautiful estate near Santa Maria, California. It's there we find Dawn now, just getting into her sports roadster, which stands in front of the house. Aunt Rosa comes out of the garden and sees her. Oh, hello, Dawn. Going to the station to meet Henry? Mm-hmm. Mm, child, you look adorable in that red cape. <laughs> Henry will be proud of you. I hope so. Oh, Aunt Rose, I wish... Now, to... don't you worry. If I like this young man of yours, I'll put in a good word for him with your Uncle Jim. Oh. If you love Henry enough, I'm sure your uncle will change his mind. Oh, dear, I don't know why Uncle Jim has to be so difficult. After all, Henry was his secretary. I know, but Jim is a stubborn old dear, even if he is my own brother. And I suppose that as your guardian, he feels a lot of responsibility for you. But I told you if I like Henry, I'll put in a good word for him with Jim. Now, you'd better hurry. Mm -hmm. Don't want to keep Henry waiting on the platform his first visit here. And I'm going. And be sure you bring him right back. There'll be a lot of people here I want him to meet. We'll be right back. Goodbye. Oh, my goodness. I just got here in time at that. I wonder what all those policemen are standing around for. Oh, where is Henry? I don't see him anywhere. Oh, dear, you don't suppose he missed the train? Oh, how stupid. I'll bet he did. Anyway, I certainly don't see him. Oh, now, now, what do you suppose that nice-looking young man with the must-up hair is staring at me like that for? Oh, he, he's coming this way. He, he, he's going to speak. Your hands, lady. Stick him up. What? Quick now, I'm not kidding. What do you mean? Put your arms around my neck. Hide my face and drape your cape about us. Quick now. I'll do nothing of the sort. I'll scream. If you do, I'll shoot. Don't, don't poke me with that gun. All right, then drape that cape around us. What? That's right. Now kiss me and look as if you meant it. I won't. I'll, I'll shoot. No. Oh. Oh. That's better. He must be here. I saw him jump the train. Keep right on kissing me. Say, darling, I thought you'd never come. Oh, darling, I thought you'd never come. There. They've moved away. Now, get me out of here. I will not. I'll call the police. Listen, I'm not a criminal. It's all a mistake. I don't believe you. Okay, have it your own way. I'm a crook. Have you got a car here? Yes, I, I mean, no. No, I'm with friends. You're lying. Get me into that car. I won't. Little lady in the red cape, you get me into that car, I'll blow you sky high. You coward threatening a woman. Well, I'm a criminal, remember. Well, now, drop that cape off your shoulders and hang it over my hands so they won't see the gun. There. That's it. I'm just carrying it for you. Now, get me into that car and out of this town... I wish you'd take that gun out of my ribs. I can't drive very well this way. Oh, I beg your pardon. Please forgive me for the way I've behaved, but what else could I do with all those cops after me? What did you commit it? Murder? I have no more idea why they arrested me than you have. I was sitting calmly in the train, and suddenly two large policemen grabbed me, and we had a tussle, and I broke away. Well, if you're so innocent, why didn't you have it out with the police right there? Listen, if I miss the boat sailing from San Francisco tomorrow morning, I'll lose the best chance I ever had to make good. Oh? You see, an old friend of my dad's has gotten me a swell job in China, provided I can report before a certain date. If I don't, it's all off. Please be a good sport and help me out. I swear the cops must have mistaken me for someone else. I'd like to know why I should help a man who has me covered with a gun. Well, that's pure bluff. I haven't got a gun. There's one in your hand under my cape. Take the cape off and look. All right, I... Oh, oh, your handcuffs. You see, I wasn't armed. I had to hide the handcuffs at the station, and your cape was the only answer. Oh. You've been my good angel so far. Don't make me miss my only chance. By the way, what were you doing at the station? I, I came down to meet Henry Hume, my fiancé, but he didn't show up. Your fiancé? Mm -hmm. I don't know what could have happened to him. What interests me more is what's going to happen to me. Well, I could turn you over to the police. Oh, but you wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I might. Please. What would you suggest? Well, if I could only keep out of sight till after dark, and then get to San Francisco somehow, tonight. I tell you what. I'm staying with my aunt, and she's expecting Henry to come back with me, but she's never seen him. Now, now why couldn't you be Henry just for the evening? You mean you'd take me to your aunt's house? Well, why not? 
Then tonight, after everybody's in bed, I'll lend you my car, and you can drive to San Francisco. But, but why should you do all this for me? Oh, no, I couldn't take advantage now, of... Now, now, don't oppose me. I'm quite spoiled and accustomed to having my own way. Now, now, how about it? Is it a go? Why not? Sure, it's a go. Well, incidentally, what's your name? Your real name? Larry. Larry Michael. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. Uh, how about these handcuffs? I'm sure your aunt doesn't expect Henry to show up this way. <laughs> I dare say we can find a file somewhere before we get to the house. You know, you're the most wonderful girl I've ever met in my life. Uh Don. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I'll ever repay you for all you've done for me today. Bringing me here to your aunt's house. Oh, nonsense. You made a great hit with Aunt Rose. He'll never like the real Henry half as much, poor thing. Don, you're... you're a wonder. I never knew there was a girl like you. I wonder if I'll ever see you again. It isn't very likely. Oh, please don't say that. I couldn't stand it. Oh, Don. Oh, Larry, please, I... Darling, I love you. A very pretty scene. Sorry to interrupt. Who in blazes are you? Who am I? Who the devil are you? I'm Henry Hume, this young lady's fiancé. Why, you... Larry... This is the real Henry. Oh. Well, my most abject apologies. I assure you, Don didn't want to kiss me then. I forced her to. Oh, yes? Well, then suppose you explain what you're doing here, masquerading under my name. I can explain everything, Henry. It all started when I went down to the train to meet you this morning, and you didn't show up, and... So you see, Henry, that's the whole story. Uh, I'll tell you what. Instead of turning him over to the police, I may strike a bargain with him. A bargain? All right, let's have it. Well, you see, Dawn's uncle and I don't exactly hit it off. So she and I had it all arranged to elope from Santa Maria tomorrow. Oh, I see. We were going to drive to Mexico and get married. But Dawn, Mm -hmm. I think your uncle has found out. And he's driving down here first thing tomorrow. So the only thing to do is get out tonight. But, Henry, I can't. I'm not ready. And... And what has Larry got to do with it? He fits in perfectly. If the police are after him, he won't want to take passage to China under his own name. Mm -hmm. Now, here's my idea. Larry will drive you to San Francisco tonight. Buy two tickets for China for Mr. and Mrs. Henry Hume. Then he can sail for China under my name. While you meet me at the Hotel Merton, we'll fly to Mexico in the monoplane I'm using now. I see. You want me to clutter up your trail? Sure. It's your one chance to get out of the whole skin. (laughs) It's not every crook that gets such a swell hitchhike to freedom. Oh, but... Larry wouldn't want Well, uh, I'll help you two to a good start. I'll do it. Oh, anxious to save your skin, eh? Well, how about it, Dawn? It's a perfect alibi to get us away. Certainly. Why not? Oh, very well. I'll do it. I'll go and get ready now. Oh, by the way, uh, I yes. want you to take some stuff for me in the car. Just a small briefcase. You're, you're very willing to trust me to a convict. I wouldn't if I could help myself. Come here, sweetheart. Give me a kiss. Uh, <clears throat> I think we'd better get going if we're going to make the boat. Waking up? Oh, my goodness, where are we? Just coming into San Francisco. Oh, why, it's morning. I must have slept all night with my head on your shoulder. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the last thing I remember, we stopped at a filling station, and you went in to see about having a tire pumped up. Well, I must have slept all the rest of the way. Dawn, why are you eloping with Henry? Hmm? You're not a bit in love with him, you know. I am. How dare you say I'm not? Because I know love when I see it. Oh. Well, I suppose you've had a lot of experience. Tell me, Don, what's your uncle got against Henry? I don't know. He worked as secretary for Uncle Jim for about three months. Then suddenly my uncle flew into one of his unreasonable rages, fired Henry, and told me I was never going to see him again. You know, I wouldn't stand for that. I can imagine. Don, you know what I was thinking while you slept on my shoulder? No. I was thinking that I love you more than anything in the world. Oh. Isn't that the steamship office? Uh, Oh, yes, of course. So it is. Come on. You better come in with me. All right. Uh, Why are you taking Henry's briefcase? You don't want to leave it in the car. Might be something valuable in it. Come on. Mm Mm-hmm. Good morning, sir. 
Good morning. Have you a stateroom you could give my wife and myself on the Chinese Empress sailing this morning? No, I think so, sir. Oh, and by the way, the ship sailing is delayed until four this afternoon. Oh, I see. Now, here's the name. I'll write it down for you. Oh. Would you and your wife mind stepping into this room for a moment? Why, I suppose not. Larry, what is it? I don't know. We'd better do what he says. Oh. This way, please. In here. Come on, Dawn. Oh, Larry, you don't suppose... Oh, Uncle Jim. Well, my dear, I'm sorry to see you mixed up in a thing like this. My boy, where's that briefcase? Right here, sir. Just a minute till I find the key. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're all here. $15,000 worth. Uncle Jim, what's it all mean? Larry didn't take that. It means, my dear, that Henry Hume cleared out night before last with a fortune in bonds belonging to me. Oh. How the police happened to arrest Larry in his place, I don't yet understand. I think I do, sir. You see, when I got on the train yesterday in Los Angeles, I took out your letter of traveling instructions to read again. Oh, then Uncle Jim is your father's friend who got you the job. Don, don't interrupt. Well, Go on, my boy. Well, a plain clothes man must have seen your name on the envelope. He put two and two together and clapped handcuffs on me. I had to make this steamer, so at Santa Maria I made a getaway, and, well, I guess that's about all. I think there's quite a bit you've left out, but... That can wait. In view of what you've done, I'm sure the police will overlook any minor charges against you. Oh, thank you, my boy. And good luck to you in your new life in China. Oh, thank you, sir. I owe it all to you. Oh, nonsense. I thought a lot of your dad. I only wish I had a boy like you. Well, if you've no objection to me as a relative, sir, I'd like to ask your consent to take a member of your family along with me. Well, this is pretty sudden. Is the uh, member of my family willing to go? I haven't had a chance to ask her yet. Well, perhaps you'd better get at it. The boat sails at four. Mm -hmm. Don, darling. Larry, did you phone Uncle Jim from that service station? He certainly did. Told me to charter a plane and hop to San Francisco before you got in. Oh. I had a hunch there was stolen stuff in that briefcase. But that wasn't the main reason I phoned your Uncle Don. Uh, no? What was the reason? You. I couldn't let you throw yourself away on a man like that, even for the sake of letting you have your own way. Dearest, I'm not worthy of you, but will you come to China with me? We have till four o'clock to get married and collect your things, and we already have a statement. Yes, but you, you gave the clerk our name as Mr. and Mrs. Henry Hughes. No, I gave them as Mr. and Mrs. Larry Michael. I wrote it, remember? Oh, dear, you're such an optimist. And, oh, Larry, I do love you for it. You have been listening to a romance featuring the Love Story Girl and presented with the permission of Street and Smith, publishers of Love Story magazine. Listen for the Love Story Girl in a new romance next week. <laughs>